Well, good morning and welcome to worship as we once again now have an opportunity to worship together uh, via this online service. It is uh, going to be a shortened form of the service. I have to apologize once again. The last couple of weeks we were not able to offer an online version of our service due to technical issues that we were experiencing. Um, and we're slowly getting back to what we would like to uh, offer. Uh, so what you're going to see is more of a shortened version of our worship service this morning. Um, and part of that will include the opportunity to go to our, our website. I would encourage you to do that. Go to our website, stjohnsgrandhaven.com, and uh, find a copy of this worship service so that you're able to follow along. Uh, you may be able to print it off. You may be able to download it as well. If not, I will certainly try to cover all the parts, both the pastor's part and the responsive parts that normally you would take part in. Um, also, as you're on that website, uh, take some time later on today to check out the Connect With Us section. We now are offering electronic Connect cards. During our worship, normally we offer a physical uh, Connect card that people can fill out and return to us, but we haven't gone to that yet. Uh, but right now we are offering it online. So you can give us information about yourself. You can check off things that you are interested in, things that are going on here at St. John's. And then of course you can add prayer requests as well. And that'll go directly to our office. And then um, also I want you to know that we are going to be offering VBS, Vacation Bible School, uh, in August. Uh, Craig Kashubi, our Director of Youth and Family Life Ministries, has done a phenomenal job of, of getting all over this and using resources that are available. And we have an online resource, an online tool that allows us to do a virtual vacation Bible school, again, on August 5th through 7th. And folks, I've been able to look at some of this, go through some of the sample sections that they offer. And when I say that it is easy to use, it is easy to use, so there's nothing to fear. So look for more information about that virtual vacation Bible school. At this time, we will begin our worship as we always do, by beginning uh, as we remember our baptism into Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Friends in Jesus, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. And together we confess, most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, well, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that, ever mindful of your final judgment, we may be stirred up the holiness of living here and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson for today comes by way of the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, the 44th chapter. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me, since I was appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. 
Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is our epistle lesson for today from Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to stand where you are, if you're able, as we hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against father, his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> well, God's grace, mercy, and peace to all of you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's here, folks. Like it or not, we are at a year that is another presidential election year. And though it seems like 2020 has already brought with it just about everything and anything that we could possibly imagine and not have hoped for, we are now in the midst of also being bombarded by TV commercials and radio commercials and cameo appearances by each of the presidential candidates. And just as has been the case in past election years, this election promises to bring with it some of the things we can always, always count on. Promises, promises, and more promises. That's right, one thing we can be absolutely certain of is that as has been the case in past election years, each candidate will dress the part and then surround themselves with people who are hired to figure out an answer to a question that Richard Nixon used to ask. Will it sell? Or as he put it, will it sell in Peoria? And that's what Nixon would often want to know when it came to dealing with some of the big issues or the big topics of his day. Will it sell in Peoria? which was a good question. You see, the Coca-Cola company used to ask the very same question because what they discovered was that if a product would sell in Peoria, Illinois, which at that time was considered not only the geographical center of America, but also represented middle America, it would probably do well in other parts of the country too. And apparently President Nixon agreed with that whole philosophical thought. 
which is why when faced with questions as to how the American people would react to issues of his day, issues ranging from that of the Vietnam War to whether or not he should pay a visit to China, Nixon would ask those around him whether they thought the idea would sell in Peoria. Will it sell? I suppose it's a question that both President Trump and Senator Biden are asking and will most likely ask in the next three plus months. After all, they both fully realize the harsh reality when it comes to politics these days. Each could come up with the greatest ideas known to mankind. They could find a cure to COVID-19. They could fill everyone's wallets with cash. They could guarantee peace and reconciliation in the midst of all of the turmoil. But if they're not well received by the American people, they're just not going to get the votes. In fact, throughout the history of this country, it still remains true that to be a viable candidate, your message has to sell. Which is why then, after reading today's gospel lesson from Matthew, we can conclude one overriding truth about Jesus Christ. Jesus was no politician. In fact, what Jesus has to say today is, well, let's be honest, it sounds a little bit offensive. I mean, listen again to Jesus' words from Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 36. Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Wow. So much for that whole peace on earth, goodwill toward men thing that we were singing about and reading about back at Christmas time. I mean, this definitely doesn't sound like the Sunday school Jesus that we've all become comfortable with now, does it? And it certainly does not sound like this is anything that's going to sell all that well in Peoria, let alone back in Jerusalem or here in Grand Haven. So maybe you can understand why when I began to plan out this sermon for this week, I... I once again was tempted with the thought about going with something different, a different gospel reading. You see, you have to understand, I'm not much different than a lot of people. And first of all, I'm not at all against what Jesus has to say. It's just that these days, right now, I just kind of want stuff that's less controversial. And because when it comes down to it, we're surrounded by controversy. There's so much chaos right now. And when it comes down to it, this text rightly brings up a lot of questions. In fact, it's one of those times when we hear Jesus say something that really isn't necessarily what we want to hear. And yet, as God's people, we are called to once again stop what we're doing, stop what we're thinking, stop what we're spewing, and just listen to Jesus. So what is Jesus really saying when he says that he did not come to bring peace but a sword? Well, first of all, it's a powerful, powerful reminder that while demonstrating a love and a mercy and a grace that this world has yet to fully comprehend, Jesus being 100% God in the flesh, the Word made flesh, He is also the very point of contention, conflict, and division that now continues between believers and unbelievers. Now, did He bring peace on earth? Oh, without a doubt. And through his crucifixion, an everlasting peace now exists between sinners and God. But since the arrival of the Son of God, a great battle has been ongoing. A great war is being waged that continues to rear its ugly head, even within the ones that we are closest to. And we know it's all too real, don't we? Even within our own families, even with our friends, we rarely have to look all that far before we find at least someone who appears to have willingly walked away from Jesus and the truth of his word. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's passages like today's reading that has somehow sent them on their way. Maybe it's the demands that Jesus goes on to make in the verses that follow. Whatever the reason, we can now see why it can seem like a, a better idea to some to not just talk about uh, our relationship at all with others. It can be so safer, so much more safe. It's a lot safer to lay low on the topic of Jesus Christ than to, to bring up the fact that Jesus is the only way to salvation. Because you and I struggle with something that's all too real. We don't like to offend anyone. 
We don't necessarily want to stir things up. But that's not the way it is with Jesus. That's clearly not the Jesus and the way he sees it as we see him today. You see, the one who has made clear that he is the way and the truth and the life, the one who has made so clear that he is the Holy One of Israel, the great I Am, the fulfillment of every promise made concerning the Messiah, he doesn't appear to be all that concerned with whether or not we like what he has to say. In fact, Jesus has no concern at all with whether or not his message will sell. Now, his concern is only to do with the truth. The truth that separates those living in darkness from those living in the light. But oh man, we don't like to talk that way, do we? I admit that this is one of the main reasons that with everything we've been dealing with and with all that's been going on in our lives, including my life, I would have rather preached on something, well, a little simpler, something a little softer, a little safer, or at least something that might present a kinder, gentler Jesus than what we hear today. But honestly, I couldn't do it because we simply cannot get around his teachings. So folks, we better get into them and we had better come to grips with the truth that continues to evidence itself, evidence itself in this world that yes, Jesus can sound so offensive. It's true. As loving, caring, compassionate, merciful, and forgiving as he is, not to mention that he is also completely perfect, righteous, and holy. Jesus still offends so many people in this world. And it has all to do with the fact that at the end of the day, we are always reminded that yes, he is still 100% God, and you and I, 0% God. But he is also the judge. We also realize he's the judge who is the only one who then has the right to eternally judge and condemn. You see, as broken, fallen sinners, we are anything but righteous and holy apart from Christ Jesus. And we have absolutely no defense or excuse for anything that we have ever done to offend God. Which means that in his presence, we also have no defense as to why we have and continue to place so many other things above him. You see, when it comes to matters of salvation, we all stand in the presence of a very offensive God, a threatening God, with no defense of our own. We stand naked and ashamed, and we are guilty of so much. And yet it's our nature to still fight it, isn't it? And we would rather walk out on anyone who would dare suggest that we are, are to put someone else above our, our loved ones such as our parents, spouse, and children. After all, who would ever dare to suggest that family should come second to anyone? Well, Jesus, that's who. God, that's who. The one who knows best that this world is not what it's all about, that our parents, our children, and our friends can't save us because this world is so fallen, filled with sin and imperfection, it's the same one who is bold enough to lay it on the line for our lives. And the one speaking so offensively to us today is the very one who even brings up something that was about as offensive as you could ever hear back in his day. As if reminding others that nothing or no one should ever come before God wasn't enough, Jesus goes on to bring up something that was downright threatening and horrible and shameful. Did you hear what he mentions as he goes on? Jesus now mentions the cross, that Roman cross, known only at the time as an instrument of horrible execution and death. By the way, just as a side note, this is the very first time that the cross is even mentioned in Matthew's gospel by Jesus or anyone else for that matter. But it is interesting. Because the way our Lord refers to it is completely contrary to how anyone would have ever thought of the cross. Instead of something to avoid at all costs, Jesus takes the cross, which it would have been avoided due to its shame and its horror, and he turns it into something that demands our focus that we pick up and take with us. Listen again to what he goes on to say in verses 37 through 39. Jesus says, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. 
Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What? Not only is this the first mention of the cross, and not only is it given by Jesus himself, but in the midst of such strong and offensive language, Jesus lays it on the line as to who his true followers are. He even goes so far to tell us that we must be ready and willing to take up our cross each and every day as his followers. But there is good reason that he says this. This is so personal to Jesus. This is so personal to him. It's very personal to Jesus as the true living God because he is leading us now to see why he has come. In fact, that eternal separation of his children is so personal to him that he would be willing to take on the cross for you and me. You see, if you and I can fully comprehend and digest what Jesus knew and what he still knows when it comes to what sin and this world and the devil are trying to do to his children, that's you and me and all those other folks around us on this planet, we finally begin to take in why Jesus is never willing to beat around the bush when it comes to, to, to what it is, to who it is, that should always remain first in our lives. Because as the Heavenly Father revealed to us in the person of Christ, Jesus does not hold back when he sees the enemy threatening to steal away, steal away any of us as his children. The eternal death of his child, any one of them, losing even just one, was and still is extremely offensive to God, to Jesus, which is why the Jesus we hear from today, he's not concerned about whether or not his message is going to sell. In his great love for you and for me, he remains concerned for us and for our eternal well-being. He is concerned about the salvation of every one of his children, which is why not a single one of the disciples, let alone anyone else, would ever have been able to get in the way of his journey to that hill outside of Jerusalem. The eternal separation of any one of his children, the thought of any one of his children not being with him, was not and is not acceptable. It's not an acceptable option to our Heavenly Father, and therefore the sacrificial death of His Son was not an option either. That's why we also find that for our Lord, it's never been a matter of temporary and worldly comfort, and it should never be the case for you and me either. Here's the thing. You want to be a follower of Christ? Then hear Jesus well. Let him lead you to cast everything aside and follow him. Don't follow your heart. Follow his. Don't follow this world or your earthly possessions. And as hard as this is to hear while you continue to love the ones that God has placed in your life, do not place your loved ones above him in any way. Simply follow him. Set aside everything this world has to offer and just follow Jesus. And follow him all the way to the cross. See it for what it really is. The most offensive statement known to this world. That Jesus died because of you. And he died because of me. But also don't miss the fact that he has also died for you. And for me. And that he did this out of a love that still cannot be compared to anything else in this world. You see, when we hear Jesus speaking words like those from today's gospel lesson, we come to realize that though they may not at first sound like they're filled with all kinds of love and concern for us, oh, they are. In fact, these are words from a heavenly father to his children, telling us to live with the same urgency that we hear in Jesus' voice. These are words that are filled with eternal hope as he points us now to the only way of salvation, a heavenly father willing to die in the flesh of man so that his children can live forever. Now again, don't get me wrong, I get it. These words that we hear from Jesus today, they do sound offensive. They even may sound like just a whole lot of offensive law, because they are. But don't ever forget that they are words spoken by the one who is the very living gospel. The one who has turned the most offensive form of Roman execution and death now into a sign 
of eternal hope that is filled with life and peace that lasts forever. Now, are the words that Jesus spoke words that will sell in Peoria? Well, I don't know if they'll sell, but I do know that they have and they will continue to save. All praise be to Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all our understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, we have an opportunity to confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. So we confess together as God's people. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of your life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Of course, at this time during the service, we would often have our opportunity to offer our tithes and offerings to God and thanksgiving to Him and all that He has done for us. I would encourage you to find creative ways to give. Uh, you can go to our website uh, to find ways to give online. You can also drop things off here at the church, but uh, just encourage you to continue to be faithful as God's stewards. At this time, we go to our Lord in prayer. Eternal Father, through your word, you have called people out of every nation to be your church. Make your whole church a family that is strong and sound teaching and united in love. Move us so that we may not ignore your call to encourage those who are ensnared in sin, to speak your truth in love in order to win back our brothers and sisters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have given pastors and missionaries to your church to proclaim the eternal truths of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Guide all who lead in this place, as well as those who lead in all Christian congregations, that we may follow your will as we take up our cross and follow you. Empower us with your spirit to joyfully serve in the areas to which you have gifted each and every one of us, that we may live our lives to the glory of your name and all that we say in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, look graciously upon our nation. Protect its liberties and advance the daily and eternal welfare of all. Preserve those who serve in public office that under their leadership we may lead quiet and peaceful lives in all godliness and honesty. Be also with the nations of this world, bringing peace to those who still live in turmoil. Raise up leaders that will lead according to your will and seek your guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, Holy Spirit, you daily show us that the harvest fields are still ripe, and so many have yet to hear and receive your eternal and life-giving truth. Make us ready and willing to go to those who have yet to live in the assurance of salvation, and use us as bold messengers who live out your gospel message in both word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you alone are the master healer and the great comforter. So we ask that you bring healing to those who we have named before you throughout this week and even today. Grant comfort and peace to those who have lost loved ones and prepare us to do your work and make us ready for that day on which you call us home so that together we enjoy the feast that has been prepared by you for all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of our Lord Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You have a blessed week. Go and celebrate that Christ has come for you and go and live out the truth as his followers. Amen.